Have you ever experienced a situation when you get from bad to worse? A few years ago, after an unexpected divorce, I went to Cape Town, South Africa, alone to search for meaning of life again. <laughs> And I did something I have never done before: repelling. So, on the top of Table Mountain, which is like 3,653 feet, more than a thousand meters above sea. From the top, I have a rope wrapped around my waist, with a heavy helmet, a pair of gloves, and I was to rappel down the cliff. <laughs> Halfway through, my feet slip. I lost my balance, flip upside down, <laughs> hung by the rope in the midair, swinging about. Roasted by the hot, blazing sun, just like a Peking duck. <laughs> Life happens, right? Unexpected, unpredicted, uncertain. In science, we call these turbulence. Most people think of turbulence is really bad, negative. Actually, turbulence is part of life. You can't have anything happen in life. To improve and get better without turbulence, you can't avoid it. So might as well embrace it. Learn to dance with turbulence, and your life will be more interesting, intriguing, and more insightful. I'm going to explain this idea from the perspective of my experience with art and science, and how this might relate to your business and life. At the end of the talk, you will have some option to see how you might. Dance with turbulence. Flow is part of life. It's both a metaphor and a mindset. Not all flows are created equal. Most people have never seen what flow looks like. Fortunately, back in 12th century, a Japanese monk came up with a very simple way to see flow. As part of his meditation. The monk emptied his thoughts into the water. With the pointed brush, dipped into a small bowl of black sumi ink, the kind that Asians use for calligraphy and brush painting. And then, one drop at a time, the tip of the brush would touch the surface of the water, just like pebble drop into the pond. The ink ripples out and forms concentric rain. He took a piece of rice paper, lay on top of it to capture the pattern. That is known as the Japanese sumi nagashi. It means flowing ink in English. The gift of the priest is to present a way that you can make the invisible visible, and so now you can see what the flow looks like. As the oldest daughter of the youngest son in a big Chinese family, I was absolutely nobody. So I thought. I was studying in America and do something that matters. Now back then, I spoke math better than English, so I majored in mechanical engineering with my graduate work in fluid mechanics. That's the study of the most important thing in life: air and water. After years of solving differential equations, analyzing the data from the research work from wind tunnel and water channel. I do know a lot about flow, so when I heard about flowing ink, it's calling my name. <laughs> But without the opportunity to see what the monk original work looks like, I just combine what I know about physics and a little bit imagination. I came up with this. I imagine this is what the monk have done. As you can see, the rings is not. Perfect at all. There's no such thing as perfect circle on the water. No, it's a complex system. The ink is flowing, the water is moving, the wind is blowing, the earth is turning, just like managing people. <laughs> so I lay down what I saw. 
And when I showed this to my engineering friends, it's on a piece of rice paper, three feet by four feet, almost transparent. They were very impressed. What kind of app did you use? <laughs> I was hooked. So I spent several years later on after that doing experiments and research, testing the surface tension, adjusting viscosity, trying out different inks and pigments, different、uh, paper to combine the fluid mechanics and artistic license. So I created a body of work called "Painting on Water," and I brought some samples to show you. Now, in the middle of this piece, called "Geography of Dreams," you see the straight lines. It's very smooth. In science, we call it laminar flow. In life, you say, "Go with the flow." <laughs> and the professional athletes and creative people say this is kind of like the peak experience, and they are in the zone. Now, if you find yourself finishing a gallon of ice cream when you binge watch Netflix for the last four hours <laughs> by yourself. You were in the zone, <laughs> just not very productive. <laughs> Sometimes laminar flow could be very boring. So, like you driving down the expressway when traffic is moving along, as expected. Your kid comes home with the A, as expected. <laughs> Amazon Prime deliver on time, <laughs> as expected. What is more interesting is look at the bottom of the picture. You see that swirl piece? It's Eddie. No, not the guy I used to go out with. <laughs> if you work with water, like if you fishing, sailing, scuba diving, you know what Eddie looks like. And if not, you can take a small drop of cream and drop it into a cup of black coffee, and you will see it swirl. Now, disclaimer: If you decide to do that, your cup of coffee will have a different relationship with you from now on. <laughs> It is happens when two currents are going into opposite direction, and it creates that swirl. So, if you are contrarian, you create eddies. If you are dealing with difficult people, you are dealing with eddies. And if life is not going the way you expected because of the kids, the weather, the accident, you are just dealing with eddies. There's plenty of eddies going around. We don't run out of them. It's aging parents, career change, health issues, global warming. Now, if there's a little eddy here or there, they would dissipate through time. When there's a lot of it, that's when it causes disorder. In life, you call it. Chaos. In science, we call it turbulence. Look at the middle of the flow of the river. The water just moves along. It's at the edge when the water is splashing against the land. When there's turbulence happening, it's twist and turn. That's why, in technology and in creative field, we call that the cutting edge. It is in those space the turbulent water that washes the stone to come up with a smooth pebble. It's in turbulence that idea will shape and form, when brilliant solutions will emerge. It's in this space that the ideas are being tested, tossed and turned, tested and tried, and failed and reiterated. It's the process of innovation. Nowadays, as a business consultant, I advise my clients to deliberately create turbulence and disruption. When there is a lot of turbulence, things get volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Most people handle that when they get overwhelmed. They sweep away or sweep under. They're dealing with stress by overeating, excessive drinking, or they just become really angry and difficult to work with. Back when I was hanging upside down on the rope, <laughs> when the wind start to move the rope, and then start to swing left and right, it was turbulence in my mind. 
instead of being swept away, I was thinking, oh good, the helicopter just arrived. Four handsome Navy SEAL came to rescue. <laughs> I was hallucinating. <laughs> When you can ride through the turbulent time, you can be more alert, innovative, and creative. Sure, there'll be disorder, disoriented, and unpredictable. You can also expect asymmetric effect. For example, IBM, International Business Machines, redefined itself through turbulent time, and now they are the top information technology consulting firm worldwide. There's a furniture company called Steelcase. They have a line of modular furniture that you can rearrange and mix and match to create traffic flow differently, different time. You see, this trend is happening at incubators and innovation centers at universities. Another example is the new headquarters of Apple in California. The building is shaped like a ring. And the purpose is to create the probability of randomness that people can walk across the field and bump into each other. The late Steve Jobs had this belief that he encouraged the employees to have random conversation. Doesn't have to have the PowerPoint, you know where it's going. Just talk. And ideas unexpectedly could emerge. In life, there's two kinds of flow. According to science, and according to the ancient philosophy of the Tao Te Ching, is it time for you to embrace the turbulence? How do you do that? How do you dance with turbulence? Step out of your comfort zone, go to an event, do something different, speak to a stranger, watch TED talks, <laughs> learn a new language. At first, you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. For a little bit, the more you practice, the better you know how to dance with turbulence. Oh, back to the story when I was on the cliff, <laughs> hung upside down. Don't try this at home. <laughs> My instinct, the first reaction is, "Quick, take a selfie." <laughs> But I left my iPhone on the top of the cliff. The next thing is okay. Quick, let me wiggle as and struggle, and so that I can get、uh, the attention and let my team know that I'm in trouble. Then the physics training tells me, remind me, that the more I move, the more I shake, it will give the rope more energy, and the swinging is going to keep going much longer. So instead, I decided I would do a slow dance with turbulence. Me, myself, and the rope become one. And slowly, the swing came to a stop. My feet touched the cliff, and I was able to pull myself right side up, with a new story to tell. <laughs> Now, in closing, you may forget how to pronounce the Japanese art suminagashi. You may forget about the Peking duck story. But please remember. Embrace turbulence. Dance with turbulence.